hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at the entity appointment how it is linked to a patient and then we will see how we were able to get this basic piece of information this listing of appointments on a page so without wasting much time let's dive into the code so the first thing which we need to understand is appointment is basically a patient requesting for a time when he will be visiting the doctor in a particular location so which means an appointment is related to a patient okay and then the appointment is also related to a specific location other than that it has a date and a time which means now if we go to the migration of appointments let me go inside the database folder migrations appointments table you will see I have two foreign IDs, patient ID, location ID, then I have date time and then this is the created at and updated at. This date and time is basically when the patient is requesting for the appointment. So in this case, for example, Dinesh Kumar okay, is requesting for an appointment for 5th of this month at 9.30 okay so that is the basic information which i am trying to capture so with this migration in place let's quickly look at the model that we have so inside the models folder appointment obviously it has this fillable property where i have these four properties that i have defined as fillable then i have patient this is the first relation so i am saying that an appointment belongs to a patient okay and that is the reason we have a patient ID over here second is location I'm saying an appointment belongs to a location and we have the location ID here as well with these two things in place I think we are generally set to create an appointment so let's look at the route which we have created inside routes web.php if you go at the bottom we have this new route which is appointments that's what the URL is right we have an appointment controller we're calling the index method on that controller so let's look at that con method over here inside the controller again I have appointment service as a private variable which I'm injecting through the constructor again I believe that this service will generally be required on all the methods inside this appointment controller and hence I have added it in the constructor but if for any reason I feel that this is only required on the listing page and rest everything doesn't require it I can inject it only on that particular function however as I said right now my understanding is that I will require it in all the functions okay so we can understand that we have a service file where we have get appointments and that get appointments is this variable which we are passing to the inertia render function fine so let's go inside our service function inside the service function we have appointment query we started the query right then we are loading two relationships I'm doing this kind of a syntax because I want to select only certain fields from the relation in the patient field there will be created at updated at and some other stuff which I really don't want to view on the dashboard so why should we select them so we have a very selective you know fields over here for example in location I'm only picking up the location name I don't need anything else okay so I have a very um, slimmed down data uh, requested from the database then I'm sorting the appointments by date and if the dates are same then order by ID and then I'm paginating it and that entire thing is being returned by the service and that's what we get inside this variable okay so with that done we are sending that variable to our appointments TSX file which 
is the react page which will be rendered to give us this thing right so as you can see as usual the back end was very straightforward we have done not too many things just created the migration the model now we set up few relationships in the model created create the controller in in this case we have a service so that you know the queries can be inside the service controller calls the service gets the data sends to the view done so now let's look at what we have done in the front end let me close these things so let's go inside our resources folder js pages appointment.tsx okay so first things first i am expecting oops right i'm expecting interface props let me why don't i close this git lens for some time it's kind of annoying while explaining the code okay reload required fine that should do the trick right so as you can see now what one dark okay i will do that later on this page we have a props called appointments because if you remember the appointment controller let me still open it up for you we are sending the variable right so this page will get this as a prop that's what inertia will do for us and in here i am saying that this prop is of type i paginate appointment why because the controller is returning a paginated object but if you remember from the last video where you know we were loading the patients we had paginated data but then where is my interface interfaces we had models so we had i paginate patient and there was i paginate so paginate said you know the data is array unknown and then the i paginate patient extended it and said data array i patient so similarly over here i have a new interface called i paginate appointment this extends i paginate so all the properties from i paginate which we require which is typically there in the paginated object of laravel for example current page first page url blah 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 is already present the only thing which i paginate doesn't know is inside the array what kind of data we are expecting so what we do is inside i paginate appointment i say that we are expecting data to be of type array but inside here it is of type i appointment and inside appointment i have created this entire thing okay so far so good so let's close this out again this is pure typescript if you don't want to do it it is fine you know you can skip this and if you are doing in javascript js again it will work you don't need to do this but what happens is i feel typescript is very useful the type hinting and the statistical analysis of the code does help you a lot during the development you will catch errors pretty quickly anyways this is not a video on why you should use typescript but yes i sometimes get quite excited about the fact how much say time saving you can do with typescript anyways so let's go back to our code we have an appointments page this is the component which re is a react component that inertia will render when the controller is requesting that um, controller is handling that request okay we have a function called handle data change this is very similar to location list handle data change is called when the pagination or there is any change in the table data in this case when the pagination urls are clicked this function will get called we will construct this url and we are making a get you get request to appointment dot list and then page equals the pagination current page in that in this way what happens is the pagination starts working for example if i go to the service right now i am expecting 20 if i make it 2 if i hit refresh you can see my table now shows three pages i am on page number one 
if I click on 2, you can see the URL has changed and the records are changing. So this is how the pagination works. And when I'm clicking on these links, this function handle data, uh, handle table data change is getting triggered. Okay. Now let's go to our template inside the template. Just ignore these things. These are cosmetic things, which I will change later. This is the divider. Now we have a column inside that we have table table has a row key ID pretty straightforward. This is the key which is required by the component data source data source in our case is obviously going to be appointments dot data because the paginated data holds the entire appointments inside the dot data property columns we have defined it is below over here. I'll come to the columns later on because there is a few things which I have changed. Okay. On change, we had already discussed that the pagination is this, how it is handled. And then we have this configuration for the pagination. Bottom left is the pos pag uh, pagination size changer, blah, blah, blah. All these things are over here. The most important thing is columns. So now let's look at how we have worked with the column. In here, let me first show you the actually data object so that it is much more clear to you. Let me open up components. Let's go up, up in the hierarchy. And this is our page inside appointments. This is a paginated data. So we have data and then we have appointments, right? Now inside appointments, if you see the name of the patient is inside patient and then name which means it's a nested object. Now, in typical scenarios where, let me see if we have, have an example. Yes, when we have the object keys referenced on the first level, right? For example, this is my data. This is the first level keys inside our object. So when we are referencing date, location ID, ID, something like this, right? I can directly use data index. But in few cases, I am referencing patient dot patient ID, patient dot name, which means this is second level, or we can even go to third level. In that case, what you have to do is instead of this data index, you need to run render function. And the render, fun render function takes a close, I mean, this is the format, you know, it gives you key and record from the record, which is that particular row, you can get any particular property. And that's how I have done it. Okay, so I have patient ID, name, phone number, date, and time. So yes, with all these things in place, we finally have our appointment listing page ready, where we can also, you know, configure our pagination object let me do that so that the table shows the information exactly what we need i haven't deliberately showed certain things like age and stuff because the receptionist may not require that the doctor will automatically see it but again it completely re depends on the requirement i haven't um, discussed in details about what field my friend wants but this is from my own understanding. If he, if he is requesting me to add a few fields, I mean, whatever is there in the relation, I don't think that will be a problem. So yeah, that's about it guys. That's how we have created the appointments listing page. I understand that there are quite a few important concepts to understand in terms of how the model relationships were done, how I created those interfaces on the front end and you know, the data binding of the data table and all those stuff. So, I hope I was able to explain it to you properly. If you like this video, do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel.